Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I want to show you how to use, you know, one of Airflow's more recent developments, uh, data sets and data driven scheduling, and most importantly, deferrable operators to do asynchronous data ingestion into a BigQuery database uh, and then do some transformations on that via DBT. But the really critical part here and the part that you know, I, I want to showcase is now the ability to have sensors um, that run and pull locations in a deferrable mode, which all you need to do is go into the environment file and set a defer mode. And I'll show you how to do all that. Um, and then that job, instead of taking up a worker slot like before, will now be taken care of by a dedicated trigger or node that runs alongside your airflow environment. So that can handle hundreds, thousands of asynchronous jobs, all those polling locations, all those operations being handled by the trigger and not taking up any worker slots until the desired state that you know the file has arrived, the uh, data set has been updated, things like that. Once that state has been achieved, then trigger the workflow. Um, and this is really useful when you have you know, something like two different teams that both need to work together. Um, so instead of relying on, hey, I need to line up these schedules so team one produces a data set uh, right before team two uses that data set for some purpose, now data, team two will have their processing data set triggered the second that that data set is available. Right? So there's no more lining up and mismatching schedules. It's all happening just in time. So without further ado, let's get into it. And if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. But first thing we're gonna do to get started is open up Terminal um, and start to create a fresh Airflow environment. So the first thing we're gonna do is just navigate to a place to drop our repo and create a repository. So here we're just gonna make directory uh, async bq, cd into that. And then we're gonna use the Astro CLI, so local command line tool for running and developing with Airflow, run Astro dev init, and then this will create us the bones of an empty Airflow project directory. So then what we'll do is go and open that up. So open up async bq and start customizing our project directory uh, so that we can use it uh, and start developing our DAG. So the first thing we need to do is in introduce a few different requirements and packages. And luckily here, we actually don't have a lot of different uh, environment or different things to import. Really, all we're importing is just the Google Cloud Provider and the Astronomer Cosmos Library for DBT. Uh, the Google Cloud Provider will have the uh, Google Cloud Storage Bucket operations, the Google BigQuery operations all contained within it. Uh, so kind of a one-fits-all uh, operation. And then one thing we're going to need to do that we don't do all the time within uh, Airflow is actually set an environment variable. Um, so here we're going to turn deferrable operators on. So to do that, all you need to do is go to your environment file. Um, and if you're managing your environment variable some other way, just do it through that. Um, and set this Airflow operators default deferrable equals true. Um, and now any operator that has the ability to be in the, the deferrable mode, and by that I mean using that asynchronous scheduling format where it's using uh, the trigger node to handle that polling operation and freeing up the worker slot, this is gonna tell it to use that mode for uh, all operations that can possibly use it. Um, you can in introduce and turn on on a task by task basis, but there's really no reason not to have this default turn on to true because there's no downside to using it that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I'm sure if there is, someone will make me aware of it in the comments below and I'll make another video updating it. Um, but as of right now, it's really just a straight up better, more efficient way to schedule your Airflow DAX. Um, so then what we'll do is create our actual DAG file. So we'll call this async bq dag.py. Uh, and then at the top of this, we will import a few different packages and requirements. Um, so here we're going to need to import uh, the Google BigQuery operators data sets. Um, so here, first Airflow data set DAG objects. So data sets so we can use the data set objects within Airflow, which are basically logical representations of a data set. Um, you define these just by saying data set within a task, and I'll show you how to do this, task that has a data set that's an outlet or an inlet, and that will appear within the UI and also you can use it for triggering um, those downstream data sets or da downstream DAGs based on the arrival of a data set or an update of a data set. Um, but a data set doesn't actually have any connection to 
a, a the actual uh, you know thing it's representing, right? It's strictly just an output of a task saying, hey, this has been successful or not. Um, and then you have that URI, so you have many DAGs downstream that can say, hey, when this URI is updated, I want to run this DAG and consume that data under the hood from wherever it was stored. Then you also have the Airflow task decorators here. So these are the task decorators just for easier Python task definition. The Google Cloud Storage Object Existence Sensor. This is a sensor for detecting the existence of that an object with, you know, arriving within Google Cloud Storage. Then we have the Cloud Storage to BigQuery operators, so an operator to transfer our, our uh, file from Google Cloud Storage to BigQuery, then also from BigQuery to Google Cloud Storage. So I'm gonna show you both how to trigger off of the arrival of an object, but also how to send an object out for downstream triggering. Um, and here you also have the BigQuery check operator. So this is an operator to check Google BigQuery um, and, and make sure do data quality checks there. Um, also execute query operator for executing SQL queries in BigQuery. Um, and then the Cosmo providers dbt task group for just rendering our a dbt project uh, as a task group within Airflow. And then date time, date time and time delta for better, cleaner date time handling. So once we have our packages and requirements in, we're then going to define our data sets. Um, and so here, this is how you define a data set. You have data set uh, with the capital D, and then parentheses, quotes, name of the data set. And this, you know, you want to be a unique identifier for that location of the data set typically, so that here you can see the file path within Google Cloud Storage, that's what I'm using as my data set indicator. Um, similarly, I have another one for my clean data set and one for my raw data set. So I can just see, hey, when this raw data set arrives, um, I want to, then you know, trigger the rest of my DAG. So then, defining the DAG, what we're going to do um, is number one, so there's two ways you can define this DAG. So if you want to have it be a push operation, so in this case, I'm showing you how you would do this, you know, something else like a person or another entity that isn't managed by Airflow shows a file. If the other, you know, the other, the way this file is arriving in big in cloud storage is through Airflow, then what you can do is just have data set or you know, in this case, GCS raw clean data set is an easier way to reference that. That's why I have these declared at the top so you don't have to keep writing data set this whole thing out. Um, and so this would actually trigger, hey, whenever this data set is, arrives or is updated for, by another DAG, then trigger this pipeline. However, what we're doing is we're basing this off of the trigger uh, of you know, something else has arrived. And for that, we actually have no schedule. So you know, let's say a Kafka queue has put this file out or, or you know, a, a, another application has. Um, that we couldn't manage with Airflow. So here what we do is we'll have a Google Cloud Storage object existence sensor that's going to t constantly ping that location for the arrival of that file. And then if that file doesn't arrive, or when that file arrives, then it's going to trigger the rest of the DAG. So essentially this DAG will almost be, will be always on, right? So it'll every time that this file arrives, this DAG then gets triggered. Um, and so you just have this file, you know, this DAG constantly running. So you would actually probably want to use the at continuous schedule um, if you didn't have this trigger itself again at the end of the DAG, um, where effectively what happens here is, you know, every time this DAG completes, it then will restart and start sensing that location again. Um, but if you just want it to be one time, you can just set the schedule to none and, you know, it'll just do it once and then you can reset it manually. There's a lot of different ways of kind of handling that. But here you'll notice I don't have to flag anything to use be in the deferrable mode. So after this starts the sensor operation, it's just going to keep poking from that trigger node without taking up a worker slot until that file arrives. Then once that file arrives, so you know we've, we've detected that this file has arrived in the desired location, then we're going to load it into BigQuery. So here we're going to use that big GCS2 BigQuery operator, put in that bucket name, source the objects, just you know kind of typical all the fields you need to fill out to for BigQuery to know where to pull that raw data set from. And you'll see here, I'm actually also have an inlet here for my data set. So this inlet will actually wait for this data set to be updated, um, which again is you know arriving from some external location. And it also has the visual uh, thing on the, or benefit on the Airflow graph view. It will show that, hey, this data set is what's triggering this DAG. So a nice visual representation of it as well. Then what we're going to do, and it's just, you know, the data has arrived in BigQuery, is do some basic data quality checks here. So using the BigQuery check operator, select, um, you know, from all these table, all these fi fields from this table, so important field, um, every row in this table, and make sure none of them are null. 
Um, and then once we've made sure none of them are null, we're then going to have a DBT task group. Um, and here we're going to have you know, project directory, profiles directory, so wherever you're storing uh, profile, and then also execution config. Um, so in real life, you, know, you would already have this all defined, um, and this is just be your path towards DBT VNV. Um, and if you want to see how to set up Cosmos, I have a lot of videos on that specifically. Um, so it's not going to take time away in this video. I just kind of wanted to focus on the data-driven scheduling component. Um, but once you've you know, run your Cosmos workflows via the DBT task group, you'll then have, you know, hey, I want to validate that this data was prepared correctly, making sure that you know, it's all been transformed right. Uh, and then I want to select account, make sure that's of the right uh, expected amount. And then finally, I want to export the clean data back to Google Cloud Storage. Um, and so here I'm using a different URI with a you know, export format as CSV. Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually have an outlet here. So I'm going to add an outlets here. Um, so if I go down to outlets equals Google Cloud Storage clean data set. Now what this is going to do is update that data set object that I defined up here. So that Google Cloud Storage update object. And then other DAGs downstream can do what I showed you earlier and add that schedule um, that says, hey, Whenever this file has arrived, uh, indicated by the updating of this data set object, now I want that pipeline to run. Um, and then here you just set up some very basic bit mapping, but really this is the important part, is this outlets, this will then post an update within the Airflow UI to then run another DAG. Um, and that's really all I wanted to show you today, just kind of a basic uh, flow of, hey, this is how you can both schedule a DAG based off the arrival of a data set from either another Airflow DAG or any external entity, uh, and then trigger any Airflow downstream DAGs that might re be relying on this data set. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.